Zenless Zone Zero is a fast-paced action combat anime gacha game with a heavily featured puzzle mode and roguelike elements made by Hoyaverse set for release sometime in 2024. It'll be playable on PC, iOS, Android, and more than likely PlayStation. I've been extensively testing this second beta. As much as I could, I got it a week later than other people, and I'm ready to give my full unbiased review, at least as unbiased as any one person can give. I'll try to give all the relevant perspectives that I can on how the game is is in this state. I'm going to talk about 14 points that come to mind when I want to review a game. And I just want you to know, I cover Genshin Impact fully on my other channel. I cover Honkai Star Rail on this channel to a more casual degree, but I still love the game. So this is not a hate piece. This game has some really high highs and some really low lows. So let's get into point number one, the characters. Overall, for a set of launch characters, I think that this is a great set. Now, I know some people will say, oh, you know, there aren't as many many characters or like really well designed characters as there are in something like Genshin or Honkai Star Rail or Honkai Impact. But you have to remember those games have been out for a while now. For a launch roster with only one limited five star, they often save their best characters for limited five stars after all. I think this is a great roster of characters. Obviously we can't talk about it without talking about the toning down of certain attributes of certain characters. But I think on the whole, this game succeeds in having a bit more of a mature vibe than Genshin and Honkai. I think also having a straight up bear is just badass. It's something that we've never seen for Hoyoverse characters. The variation of body type from very small and petite to just massive like a bear. And of course, some furry stuff that some people love. The more sexual side and just some really funky ideas. Like a maid shark is something that I never thought I wanted and I'm still not quite sure about it. But I have to say she's really growing on me. So good on Hoyoverse for doing some bold things with the design. And I think as long as you're into this general aspect and this general vibe of the game, I think you're going to find some great characters here, which is obviously really important for a gacha game. I give characters 8.5 out of 10. For the story, a lot of it is communicated through comic book style panels and nice cutscenes. And I find this completely fine. The style does not bother me at all. The actual content of the story I find is much lower than Bellabog from Hongai Star Rail or some of the new stuff that we've had in Genshin. I think it's more along the lines of the really early Genshin stuff, but even versus that, I personally find it not super intriguing. I'm not super engrossed in the lore and the world. I think it's like they're trying to go low fantasy, but because, but I think that Hoyoverse has a real strength towards this high fantasy, towards really grand, fantastical things going on. And this game is sort of, it's, it's sort of more toned down. And I feel like that causes it, at least for me, to lose some of the mystery and the intrigue of the story. I don't see a lot of people talk about how much they love the story, how interested they are in the story, how much they want to see it unfold, what kind of mysteries it holds. Whereas I think for both Genshin and Honkai Star Rail, there's a lot of meat and lore and interest that goes into it. And I'm just not seeing it from this game right now. I give the story, plus the delivery is just all right. The character writing is solid. The voice acting is really good. I give the voice acting like a nine out of 10, but the story itself gets a 6.5 out of 10 from me. The visuals are an in, in an interesting place because I feel like we've already talked about the visuals for the and for the characters like the playable characters i find them awesome but the visuals for the world overall kind of drab kind of dull and kind of samey the enemy variance goes from mediocre to great depending on if you're looking at sort of trash mobs i feel like the trash mobs in the game so far are pretty generic pretty samey pretty normy and the bosses really are unique and something special i give the combat the visuals itself really high praise i love the combat i think that the gameplay itself and the way the game looks while you're fighting it, it looks incredible. It's it's top tier. 9 out of 10 for combat visuals, 5 out of 10 for regular enemies. I give it maybe a 6 out of 10 for the overall world. There's just not much to it. I really wish there were some spectacles that I could admire. And it, it almost feels sort of, at least to me, I get a claustrophobic feeling where there's nowhere to explore, there's nowhere to go. I'm sort of just trapped on this one street corner. And then in some really small instances while I'm battling, 
feeling in the hollows and it feels really immersion breaking honestly i feel like i don't exist in a real world and i feel acutely aware that i'm just playing a game that's just for me maybe it's because you know and i know a lot of people are going to talk about this well it just isn't for you and it's like well okay <laughs> um i feel like that's just a really unproductive conversation ending statement to say, to say just something isn't for you therefore you shouldn't talk about it is like just the antithesis of free speech and free discussion and freedom of opinion why isn't it for me though every other hoyaverse game or at least the last two hoyaverse games have been for me why isn't this game for me i love the combat i love the characters it's not for me because they decided to cut corners on the world they decided to, that's what i want to talk about next i give the bosses an out of 10 regular enemies 5 out of 10 the world a 5 out of 10 for visuals for world building it can't get more than a 4 or 5 out of 10 i can't walk around with my character with my gotcha character i can only walk under this npc this is so half-baked I, I i it's hard to believe my and, and whatever sense of immersion that i had is instantly broken when i enter tv mode i don't get to look at my characters i don't get to look at a world i just look at blank tvs i don't understand what they're going for with this game i, I don't know about you guys for me i play i play games part of it is is this escape it is to go to a different cool world and to vibe and interact with this world and of course it, it would be a different thing if i could just do the combat right if i could just play the combat that would be awesome but the problem is there's a lot of stuff like you have to spend a lot of time in this world picking up different random side quests talking to different npcs and the fact that it's so small and the fact that i can't run around with my hot characters that i spent money for presumably when i if i spend money on the actual game or a lot of time grinding that currency for it doesn't feel good it feels it feels cheap coming from genshin and coming from star rail so you don't get to explore that much in star rail but at least there's a world to enjoy your characters in and a world to be immersed in and i worry that for the casual player i feel like this game like okay so let's say it's not for me who am i i'm like a hardcore i'm like i'm like a bit of casual and a bit hardcore i'm i'm not really all into either way because i love the combat i love optimizing combat but i just like that i like to noodle and have fun i don't like to like min max and do speed runs and genshin and stuff like that and i also just like to vie with my characters i like to enjoy the world and be immersed like you guys have seen me see me walk around this little this little town here i've walked from one corner to the other and back on stream and it took me not three minutes and that's with this very slow run that this girl has and she has no dap and it, it doesn't take three minutes to get across the entire thing and you guys have been seeing i've been playing the tv mode i've been playing the combat in the back you know what it, what this game looks like at this point but let me remind you that when you open up genshin it looks like this and yes there is room for a grittier darker edgier game it doesn't have to be all bright colors and stuff like this but but genshin is a is a beautiful game and there's there's substance here there's a world here there's interesting lore it's like what is that how does that technology work oh it's the uja numa stuff and that's what now we've learned that nouvellet has, is controlling that or just just going to a random place in monstad or like just going to a ran random place in monstad there's just something to look at now granted monstad doesn't look as good good as Fontaine does but this font Mondstadt came out years ago and you've got all of this stuff to explore and to and to do because you can't play combat the entire time you can't just sweaty try hard there's got to be some something that goes on in between combat and exploring but and exploring the world is and and doing the stories is what there is in Genshin in Zenless Zone Zero there's no world to explore there's just the, the street to walk through one street TV menus and some story panels and I'm, I don't really have a problem with the story panels it's not, not a big deal to me but I feel claustrophobic i feel like there's nowhere i can go i feel like there's nothing there there's nothing to explore i'm just in this little video game town not in a real world it doesn't feel real the, i give immersion i give it i give it like a two out of ten for immersion there's like a vibe but i don't feel like i'm in a world now for gameplay i've heard a lot of people talk about the gameplay being boring i don't find it boring at all i find the gameplay extremely engaging extremely fun extremely satisfying i think that there's you know i haven't gotten to the super late end game but I know the Chinese community is really liking it. They're feeling like it's very engaging, very rewarding, very enjoyable, very fun. And I agree if it, if, if it continues to develop, I'm, I'm in the mid game now, I would say, if it continues to develop and deepen and the combat strategies continue to deepen, which I've heard that they do into the end game, then I believe that this will be a fantastic, fantastic combat system, like peak, like just as good as Genshin, um, just better and worse in different ways. And I think Genshin has a fantastic combat system. So I'm very, 
very, very impressed with Zenless Zone Zero's combat. I don't think it's boring. I think the only reason people think it's boring is either because they, is because they don't understand it yet. So it's hard to either play or watch something that you don't understand. If you don't understand the intricacies and the depth to it, I think you're obviously going to get bored. Like you can't watch Genshin combat as a new player and understand what's going on and be excited. So I think the combat is really, I, I would give it a 9.5, 10 out of 10. I think the, the combat is amazing. Um, as good as the combat is, the TV system is horrible. I, I give the TV, the TV system is not fun. It's very immersion breaking. It's boring. Every time I log in to do the next chapter of a story or a side quest or a daily commission, because think about how much you have to play the TV mode. It's the main way of exploring the world. And I know that sounds weird to say, but it's like you have to do the TV mode before like everything except for domains, what are equivalent to domains and except for like to farm talent stuff and except for like the end game, like the simulated universe or spiral abyss type stuff. Otherwise you have to do TV mode first. And it's, and even in the simulated universe, it still uses TV mode, but it's not nearly as bad. But every time I log in, I'm just, I'm not excited. And then you can say it's not for me all you want, but who is it for? Who is the TV mode for? I haven't seen Zenla Zone Zero promote the TV mode in any marketing campaign, in any gameplay trailer. They've never shut it off. Why? Why is that? If it's, if it's so good, then why, why haven't they promoted it? I haven't seen anyone talk about how fun it is. People, e even though a lot of people hate on the puzzle system in Genshin, a lot of people find the puzzle system fun and engaging and they 100% the maps and stuff like that. I don't think the puzzle system in Genshin is groundbreaking. I think it's solid. I think it's good, but I don't think it's great. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's, it's, it's like good or fine or solid or, or good, but I can play the puzzle system in Genshin for how even you could, I, I would even concede it's as, as bad as mediocre for how mediocre someone might say it is. I don't think it's mediocre. I think it's solid. But even if someone says it's mediocre, at least I get to do it with my attractive characters that I wished for a team that I built and I get to use my awesome characters with the puzzle. I know that's kind of weird, but I get to look at Raiden Shogun. I get to stare at Elon while I do these puzzles. That, I think that's a big deal, at least for me. The fact that I can't do TV mode while looking at Nicole, while looking at Ellen Joe, the fact that I can't run around the the little the little the little shops with Ellen Joe, I can only go in here to see her. I can't even drag it around and look at her from different angles. It's like this is your bread and butter. Let us look at the characters that we that we wished for, but I only get to see them here in the select screen or in combat. That's ridiculous. Why? There's no reason for this. I should be allowed to see them. They should have designed TV mode in a way that I could look at these characters, but I think it's too late, unfortunately. I don't I think it's too late for them to go back on this. I think it's too late for them to drastically change up, which I think is what it needs. It needs a drastic change up. TV mode is just not fun. It's not fun and it's not even palatable, at least to me. Do will some will the one person find it? If I if I'm wrong and everyone finds it fun, then I'm wrong, right? I don't think it's fun. I've seen most people not think it's fun. Um, but yeah, combat 10 out of 10, TV mode 0 out of 10. And I'm, I'm not I'm not even joking. That's that's pur that's purposefully how I feel. Um, the UI is very confusing. I they use a lot of symbols and as a brand new player, I don't know what most of the symbols means and a lot of labels that don't really make all that much sense. But I mean, I guess you figured out after a while. But yeah, I, I would give I'm not going to spend forever on the UI. I don't think it's like the biggest deal, but I, I think it's like a five out of 10 UI. Like it's not I mean, it's not abysmal, but it's not great either. And sometimes like I've been trying to buy a coffee for a couple days and I'm pretty skillish you guys like I'm pretty like I expect the game to do the heavy lifting for me when it comes to figuring out how to do stuff and I feel like I have to do a lot of heavy lifting in this game to figure it out which is which is fine it's not a huge deal uh music is great love the music can't complain classic Hoyoverse music is like a 9 out of 10 it's awesome the end game so far from what I've seen from what I've seen other people play we can take a look at some gameplay of people fighting the final boss as far as end game goes just to get a ch an idea of what they're what they're doing so these are basic attacks there's basic attacks charge attacks some skills um just some moving out of the way there's another skill there's more basics um, more basics people doing a lot of bait like a lot of it is, is basics at this point um more more basics and skills perfect dodge um it's really the perfect dodge there it is again and the perfect parry and the perfect switch system that really makes the game dynamic engaging and fun because you are doing basic attacks a lot of the time 
but I think that's okay. Like, all you're doing in Genshin is, for the most part, basic attacking, charge attacking, skills, ultimates. It's like the same, it's like the same stuff. It's nothing like miles ahead or miles below, but there's a little bit less maybe team synergy combos from what I've seen and a little bit more perfect dodging. There's no healers. There's no shielders, which is pretty interesting. Um, there's some, there's some off-field presence, like some characters have some solid off-field presence, but for the most part, all of your characters are being used on field, which has some pros and cons. Some people say it might make the gameplay less debt, less deep. That kind of remains to be seen, I think. And some people say that it, um, that allows you to see all the characters that you've summoned for and you get to fight with them all. Cause you know, you, you've, you've, you've spent wishes for these characters or spent money for these characters. You want to be able to see them actually fight. And I think people sometimes have that complaint of Genshin where you only get to really see one character on fight on, on field on your team. Zenlozo Zero allows you to fight with multiple and there is still strategy to team building. Um, it remains to be seen how much depth and how much strategy that is. Um, another thing to point out is here we're, we're getting some some ultimates going on or some switch super ult super switches. I don't know what they're called exactly, but you also um, have access to a little companion that fights alongside you, which has its pros and cons all on its own. But there's a little companion you can see is holding a cake or something and he follows and fights alongside you or gives buffs or give, does attacks or whatever. So that can add some more depth, um, not really to the combat because you don't control them, but to the team building and strategy behind it. Um, as of course, you're, you're going to be, we'll go back into the game. Um, just like Genshin, I'm sure you're used to it. There's constellations, there's basics, charge, skill, and ultimate. You've got a weapon. You've got six artifact slots. It's a little bit better than Star Rail's artifact system, I think, but at least from just barely glancing at it, I haven't quite unlocked it yet. But basically you can have a four piece and then a two piece set. At least the two pieces, like you can have any two piece, but I have another big problem with this artifact system, which I don't like in Star Wars either, is that there's no off piece option. So you're very restricted when you're doing optimal gearing as to what you can do. It's impossible to say how good or bad the end game really is at the end of the day. All I can say is that it has potential to have a good end game based on the mode and based on the combat. So I give the end game a tentative eight out of 10 for now. Doesn't look anything groundbreaking, but it looks serviceable enough. As far as the gotcha stuff, we already talked about the artifact system. We can look at the wish screen. I'm sure they're going to revamp this because it doesn't look that great. Like it, like it's hard to tell that she's supposed to be a five star. Um, the standard banner looks terrible. I'm sure they're going to revamp it and it's going to look better. My understanding is that there's going to be four banners, a limited banner, a standard banner, a weapon banner, and a companion banner. I don't think this is confirmed, but there is, I don't know, dreams or leaks or something that there are five star weapons and five star companions. Presumably there's going to be banners for them. We'll have to wait and see. The pity system is so far the same, exactly the same as Genshin, at least for this, the limited banner and the standard banner. Um, you do have a guaranteed five star after just 40 summons, I think it is. It's either 40 or 50. I think it's 40, which is really, really nice. And then the, the limited one is exactly the same. You also get discounted summons. So eight for the, you get 10 for the cost of eight, which is fantastic. Um, I really like that it's actually integrated into the, this banner. So you don't have to make the choice of a specific beginner banner or the, the standard banner. You just go right to the standard banner and it's treated as a beginner banner until you get that first five star. Um, the daily commissions as usual are like fine. They give a lot more reward than Genshin or Star Rail. It's hard to say if they're going to keep all the rewards. You get essentially an entire t an entire wish just for doing your dailies. You get a 10 pull for doing your weeklies and you have events and stuff like that. that gives you a lot as well. But keep in mind, you get almost nothing for exploration and we're getting a, we're getting a login bonus right now, but it's hard to say whether, you know, there probably will be a login bonus just like Tonka Star Rail. So overall, the pulls seem fine, it's, but it, it's, it's the beta. It's hard to say whether they'll keep all of this. Hard to say what the daily grind is really going to be like. It seems fine. It's all fun in games until you get to the TVs. Everything is fine except you get to the TVs. And I feel like with Genshin, with Honkai Star Rail, you can kind of get past a lot of it by just in being in the world and being with your characters. But at least in this game, it's very obvious uh, that, that you're in a game and that the, the TV's modes aren't fun and that you're not hanging out with your characters. So there's a lot of side quests. There's, there's a lot of side quests and all of them have TV modes. I think the problem I have with this game is that its value proposition is just inherently lower than Star Rail or Genshin. There's more part, the, the core game is every bit as fun, if not more fun than those two games. But the amount of stuff you have to wade through to interact with that core game for me is unacceptable. You will 
like this game if you enjoy the team EV mode, or if you don't find that unacceptable, or if they pare down the TV mode so that you don't have to interact with. If they fix the menus, if they make everything more clear, more streamlined, if they let you run around with your characters. If I could see my characters on screen all the time, that would help a lot. It would help me get through the boring parts. I feel like, like for example, and then I think about, I think about other stuff that they're, they're going to add events. They're going to add mini games that I didn't talk about the arcade machine. I feel like it's nice to have, but it's not a core feature for me of the game. Um, I know a lot of people are liking playing Snake and that stuff, and, I, and I'm excited about that. I didn't spend a lot of time playing Snake and playing Space Invaders and playing Godfinger and playing all these different games. I think it's awesome that, that this exists, but I uh, I personally like I, I do th like I really I really do think it's awesome, but I, I I'm not gonna like base my decision based on you know how good the mini games are, right? But I think it's I think it's great that they they exist and they actually seem to be quite polished. I wish that maybe we played these mini games instead of the TV mode on the way in. I don't know. They seem much more visually appealing than this black and white blah that is the TV mode. So the future prospects of this game, I think that if they somehow make the TV mode fun, if they let me run around with my characters, I would love it if they could just expand the scope of what this town can be. Let me sink my teeth into the hollows. Let me really feel what's going on. I don't feel like I'm in the world. I just feel like I'm in this little spot where it's fine as a hub for like a combat game, but then they expect me to wade through a bunch of gotcha stuff, a bunch of boring stuff. And also I forgot to talk about this. You use resin for the story. You use resin for everything. When you're out of resin, you're out of gameplay. At least in Genshin, you can run around the open world when you're out when you're when you're out of resin. With this game, when I'm out of resin, I can't play anymore. There's nothing else I can do. Yeah, you can, you know, play the simulator universe thing again and again and again, but if you can't advance your adventure rank, you can't get on to the next higher rank of the simulated universe. You got to play the same one again. So and then you can't even look at your characters anymore. So I feel like maybe it'll get better in the end end game and I won't have to deal with all this crap. But I feel like every time there's a new patch, every time there's new side quests, every time there's an event, I got to go through and wade through this boring stuff to get to the good stuff. And I feel like I get to the good stuff, especially if some of that good stuff is just mindless button mashing on the like only some content is going to be hard and engaging not all of it. So is a lot of it going to be waiting through boring stuff to get to easy stuff to go to more boring stuff? I'm worried. There is an excellent game buried within here, but I wish they'd be a bit less stingy and design more worlds. Let us, couldn't they have made us explore? Me, like, a, what about a 2D world, right? What about a 2D mini game where your characters are in 2D? I wouldn't like that that much, but at least it'd be better than the TV black and white thing. What about actually designing a 3D world where we have to run through and interact with arcade style puzzles and our, and our 3D character models are interacting with arcade style puzzles in the world. Why is it so cheap? Why is it so chintzy? They make millions and billions of billions of dollars a year. Why can't we have a bit bigger of a scope of this game? I feel like the scope is just too small for Hoyoverse. And, I, and I, I expect I expect better, to be honest. And I think this would be a decent game if it wasn't a gotcha. But even then, like the TV mode is just so boring. Like, like, go play Hades, right? Like there's some roguelike element there. Like go play Elden Ring. I mean, I guess it's a free to play game, but then go play Genshin. Go wait for Weathering Waves that comes out next year as well. I am, this so is the final question. Will I cover this game? If they don't do something about the TV modes, I will not cover this game. And that's a big deal for me because I originally made this channel planning on 100% covering this game. This whole channel, when I originally made it, you can go watch my first video on this channel. I was planning on covering this game hardcore. I expect great things. I did not expect. Um, I thought content creators were probably overblowing the TV mode and, and, and doom posting it. But if anything, they undersold how boring it is. And maybe the TV mode totally goes away later. But I can't. I was told that at AR 15 that it would get better because I was just about done at AR 15. And I was like, no, I will keep going. And I loved it for like another two levels when I unlocked the hollow zero mode. And then I went back to the regular story to advance my adventure rank and the side quest to advance my adventure rank and I was hit with more TVs and I just can't do it anymore guys. I want to have fun playing my game. I don't want to do chores so that I can have fun playing my game. I played video games for fun and I feel like if I played this too much I would hate myself especially since I can't enjoy my cool characters. So if I could look at Ellen Joe the whole time I'll play the TV mode all day but I can't. So hopefully they can find a way to fix it. I hope 
I would wish they, dev they they delay it for six months or a year and scrap the TV one entirely. Let us do something with our characters in that mode and go from there. But that's what I think. Um, this is my honest thoughts. I tried to be fair, but I can only give my personal subjective opinion at the end of the day. And I tried to be unbiased, but you know, you can't give an unbiased review. Otherwise, you'd just say something like, you know, this game has characters in it. There is a TV mode. Like everything is subjective. And just to finish all this off, because I can definitely imagine comments coming say, well, hey, this is in beta. You know, of course, there's going to be more characters. Of course, there's going to be like more areas. Of course, you're going to be able to play with your characters in the open world, in, in not the open world, but in the world. You know, of course, they're going to fix the UI. Of course, they're going to add more lore. Of course, they're going to do this and that. And you're probably right. They probably will do a lot of that stuff. But I can only review the game as is. And as is, those are my full and honest thoughts. So let me know your thoughts after watching my gameplay, after everything else you've heard, after my opinions. Are you excited to play this game? I will be excited if they can fix up some of the things I've said. My final, final review for the game at this stage is six TVs out of 10. It's not awful, but I've been critical on the game because I know how good Hoyoverse is and I know what they can do better. And I have a high standard for gotcha games. If I'm going to put up with the gotcha bull, then I want to have a great game to play. So that's it. Take care. Bye for now.